Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about breakage versus shedding. Before you go around crying, oh my god, my hair is falling out a lot, my hair is shedding, my hair is falling out in chunks or whatever. It's good to know exactly what you're experiencing, if it's breakage or shedding, so that you'll be able to know how to handle it. And this video is going to be divided into two parts. Most of today's video is going to focus on shedding and part two is going to focus on breakage. As usual, grab a pen and a paper, click the subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed. And without further ado, sit tight and let's jump straight into the video. So breakage, what is breakage? Breakage is when the hair strand snaps off somewhere along its length. It usually occurs on sites of the hair strand that are weaker, maybe like um, the ends of your hair or, or any part of your strand that has a split. Now shedding on the other hand, this is when the hair strand falls out from the roots. In most cases, you'll actually be able to see the hair bulb, the roots, you'll be able to see the bulb at the end of the hair strand. Now shedding is very normal. Naturally, we shed about 50 to 150, some, some places cited as 100 to 150 strands of hair every single day. So shedding is very normal. Where, where it becomes a problem is when it becomes excessive. So now let's jump deep into shedding. What are the causes of shedding? Number one, we have stress or telogen effluvium. Now this is very, very common. Normally when your body experiences too much stress, it usually pushes your hair strand into the telogen phase of hair growth. Our hair normally grows in four stages. We have the anagen phase, which is the growth phase, the catagen phase, which is more like a transition phase, the telogen phase, which is the resting phase, and the exogen phase, which is the um, shedding phase. I've talked about this before in my um, genetics video, the relationship between genetics and hair growth. If you want to learn more about that, watch that video. At any given time on our head, different strands are in different phases of growth. Normally about 10 to 15% of our hair strands are in the telogen phase at any given time. Majority of our hair is in the anagen growth phase. But under stressful conditions, a lot of that hair that is in the anagen growth phase gets pushed into the telogen resting phase. So we have way more, significantly more than just 10 to 15% of our hair in that phase. Our bodies are smart. It probably does this to conserve resources so that whenever your body is in a very stressful condition, it conserves resources for the other more important parts of your body, parts that are more important than your hair, to make sure that those parts get everything they need first before it starts to worry about hair. So the normal phase after the telogen phase in the cycle is the exogen phase, which is the phase where the strands actually start to shed. All that hair that was pushed into the telogen phase will eventually start to fall out over the course of time, usually about a couple of months. So that is that excessive shedding that you experience um, during an illness or immediately after an illness or stuff like that, immediately after your body has gone through a very stressful situation. It might take a few months for you to actually start experiencing the shedding, even if you might not be experiencing the stress anymore for the fact that the strands have already been pushed into the telogen phase they have to follow their natural cycle and shed in the exogen phase now number two we have scalp trauma this is basically when an injury occurs on the scalp i've personally experienced this before in the middle of my head i've told the story on my channel before like there was a time in the middle of my head where there was no hair there and I had an actual scab and it took a lot for the hair there to grow back. This happened to me in my early stages of going natural. It was a very traumatizing situation to experience. It is a miracle that today I stand before you with hair in the middle of my head. Some of the things that cause scalp trauma are hairstyles that are too tight. That is what happened to me. Maybe tight sewings, um, chemical burns from stuff like relaxers or certain hair dyes. I've also experienced a lot of chemical burns from relaxers when I used to get relaxed as a child, I, it was every single time I got a relaxer that my head got burnt. Oh God, I have gone through a lot. How am I not bald today? Honestly, I'm supposed to be bald. It's a miracle that I have hair on my head. Um, certain types of glues or adhesives that we use to glue down lace fronts, especially when they're not removed properly, that can also cause scalp trauma. Excessive scratching of your scalp, especially for people that deal with um, scalp irritations like eczema, seborrheic dermatitis, and things like that. Anything that causes trauma on your scalp can lead to damaging of the hair follicles and that is going to cause shedding. It's going to cause your hair to fall out. Number four, we have hormonal fluctuations. So think things like childbirth, menopause, birth control, stuff like that that can really affect your hormones. 
also can lead to shedding of your hair think postpartum shedding this is something that a lot of mothers have experienced before now during pregnancy more of your hair strands stay in the antigen growth phase so yes that pregnancy glow that pregnancy thing where all your hair is flourishing and looking extra healthy it is a real thing so your female estrogen hormones actually make more of your hair strands stay in the antigen growth phase so it really makes your hair flourish and look super healthy but after pregnancy though your estrogen levels tank and a lot of those hair strands that were flourishing in the antigen growth phase are now pushed into the telogen phase and eventually they will start to shed so that is what postpartum shedding is now with menopause during menopause our bodies produce lower significantly lower levels of progesterone and estrogen and that can cause hair thinning usually around the hairline the edges the crown the effects of this are usually more noticeable in some people than others so it's not like is a guarantee you're gonna experience it some people are lucky they don't experience it as harshly as other people now for birth control this can have varied effects on people as well because the pills, people usually take different types of pills and pills have different effects on different people. You sometimes you might experience a little bit of hair thinning or hair shedding. But when you're transitioning from one type of pills to a different type of birth control pills, that transitioning time when you're switching from one to the other, you can experience some hair shedding during that time because your hormones are usually like all over the place so that is something to keep in mind if you're someone that's on birth control the resulting hormonal imbalance is usually the culprit of why you experience shedding when you're taking birth control pills again it doesn't affect everybody the same way it doesn't some people don't even experience it at all if baldness or hormone related um hair loss is common in your family then you are more likely to experience this so number five we have nutritional deficiencies or nutritional over supplementation this can affect both the hair structure and the hair cycle as well now the following nutritional deficiencies can cause hair shedding or some type of hair loss we have iron vitamin D zinc niacin fatty acids folic acid biotin amino acids and proteins also, a sudden reduction in caloric intake or protein intake can also lead to hair loss. So for all those people that like to do all those really, really extreme diets where you just drop your calories significantly, it might not necessarily be healthy for your body and your hair. It, everybody has a maintenance level of calories that is healthy for your body. If you are a full-grown adult, eating 800 or 1,200 1, calories a day might not be necessarily healthy for you if you're trying to use that to lose weight. There are healthier ways to do that. And make sure that you're eating around your maintenance level to be able to keep your body as healthy as possible. As for nutritional over supplementation, also known as doing too much, the following supplements may lead to some form of hair loss or shedding or even thinning if you take them too much. So we have vitamin A, vitamin E and selenium. Nutritional over supplementation is why I have always, for as long as I've had my channel, I have always been against all these hair growth pills that people are always pushing left and right. Like I've made a whole video on this before. Personally, I'm just going to be very real with you guys right now. Personally, I have been offered money, like real good money, a lot of money from some of these companies that sell hair growth gummy bears or hair growth pills or hair growth supplements and stuff like that. I've been offered money to push a lot of these products before, but I just, I just can't do it. Because number one, I did not use those things to grow my hair. I've always been against it. I do not advise it. So why am I going to start selling them and pushing them to people and pretending like that is what I use to grow my hair? Number two, I find it very, very ridiculous that companies seek out people that already have healthy, long, um, thick hair to sell those products. Like if you really believe that your product is doing something, wouldn't the most logical thing be to give it to somebody that doesn't have hair at all, someone that's bald, someone that like their head is just a why wouldn't you just give it to that person and tell them to use these pills to grow their hair so that you have at least concrete proof that okay this person didn't have hair before they use these pills and these are their results why would you give it to somebody like me that already has hair number three the fda does not regulate what is inside those pills because they are listed as dietary supplements they're not listed as like medication or actual drugs they're listed as dietary supplements so the fda doesn't regulate it regulation is left to the manufacturer and you can't really trust that you don't know what they're putting inside you don't know what is in those pills to be honest you just have to trust whatever you see on the bottle and number four studies that have been carried out on the effects of a lot of these micro and macronutrients on hair growth are usually done using people that have the deficiencies 
So for stuff like biotin, I, I made a video specifically about biotin. Is someone that has a biotin deficiency that is going to see significant hair growth from taking biotin pills because they have the deficiency. Most of these studies are carried out with people that have the deficiency. So, so when they start taking these nutrients, obviously their hair is going to start growing back healthy. But for the average healthy person that doesn't have a deficiency, taking these supplements, taking these nutrients in excess will really not do anything for you. Best case scenario it doesn't do anything for you. Worst case scenario, it actually leads to more hair loss or more health problems for you or it gives you acne and I really don't think that is something most people want if you don't need it you really shouldn't be taking it and number five I also had a slight problem with the fact that a lot of these pills were being pushed excessively towards black women as if we need pills for our hair to grow we do not okay so this is one of the research papers I found on the effects of diet and hair loss or hair shedding this one was published in 2017 I tried to look for the most recent ones because they will have the most updated information so I'm gonna link this one down below if you guys want to read it it focuses on the nutrients that have been shown through research to have some effect on your hair loss or hair shedding um, especially when these nutrients, especially when there is a deficiency for these nutrients or when it's taken in excess. So as you can see, niacin, selenium, vitamin D, all the ones that I mentioned earlier on, vitamin E, amino acids and proteins. This chart is a more condensed form of all the information. And if you look under the column that says studies of supplementation, you would see limited information on the effects of whatever supplements improving hair growth in the absence of deficiency. That means most of these um, nutrients are the studies are done with people that have deficiencies so there is very limited information on the effects of all these nutrients on people that do not have a deficiency that means if you do not have a deficiency it's not advisable to take all these hair growth pills and gummy bears or whatever because there is really not that much information that proves that these nutrients do anything for people that do not have deficiencies now this part of the paper focuses on what happens if you take too much of certain nutrients when there is an excess, the effect that has on hair loss and hair shedding as you can see selenium, vitamin A, vitamin E have all been linked to hair loss or hair shedding if you take them in excess. Now this is a different paper basically showing the same thing. This one was actually published December 13, 2018 so another very recent um, paper basically the same information as the other one and these are two different independent research papers so the same nutrients um how they have effects on your hair if you take them in excess the ones that have effects of your hair when there is a deficiency basically the same thing this one also goes further to talk about the effects of these nutrients on the condition of your scalp and how restrictive diets also affect hair shedding and cause telogen effluvium so i'm going to link this one down below as well it's a really really nice paper contains a lot of good information ultimately to avoid hair loss or hair thinning due to nutritional deficiencies or over supplementation the best thing to do is just eat healthy as much as you can try to eat as healthy as possible eating a balanced diet making sure that you're getting all your veggies all your fruits and veggies making sure that you're eating your proteins your carbohydrates your fats just eating a really balanced diet as much as you can is going to help to keep your body really really healthy and you will not need any growth hair growth pill or supplement or anything like that so number six we have autoimmune diseases so things stuff like alopecia areata where your immune system attacks your hair follicles on your head or alopecia universalis where it attacks all your hair follicles and you lose hair everywhere not only just your head your eyelashes your eyebrows your entire body anywhere there is hair that is a very very extreme case of alopecia lupus psoriasis Crohn's disease Graves disease rheumatoid arthritis Hashimoto's disease, these are some of the um, common autoimmune disease that can also lead to hair loss. Sometimes even the recovery process or the pills, the medications that you may be taking for these diseases may be the ones that actually um, cause the hair loss. Again, I'm going to leave links below to articles and research papers if you guys want to read more. Number 7, PCOS, Polycystic Ovarian Syndrome. One of the reasons why I chose to add this one in the list is because a lot of women actually suffer from PCOS but they don't even know it. This is something that I feel is not talked about enough. PCOS causes women to have increased levels of male androgen hormones. It makes you grow thicker hair in places where men usually have thicker hair so like the chest, the abdomen, the face, the neck, the underarms. 
and it can also cause the hair on your head to start thinning or shedding the way it usually happens in men. I encourage you to please read more about it if you have the time. I'm going to leave some resources down below. If you don't have it, someone that you know may have it. So um, it's good for people to talk about these things. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Talking about it more really helps to destigmatize the condition so that people can actually start trying to get um remedies earlier in life because PCOS can also lead to infertility in some women so yeah we need to really be talking about women's reproductive and um, hormonal issues a lot more so last but not least number eight we have medications some types of medications and treatment therapies can also lead to excess hair shedding for example chemotherapy or other forms of radiation therapy that are used to treat certain types of diseases sometimes some medications can have hair shedding as um as a what they call this thing as a side effect so um yeah these are just some things to keep in mind with everything i've talked about concerning shedding as you can see most of it is internal we usually signify something that might be going on in our bodies and um, hair loss is just one of the signs um or maybe we might not be eating well or something like that so shedding is usually from an internal problem so if you're experiencing excessive hair shedding i'd advise you to just go straight to your doctor i think the first thing you should do is see a doctor or a primary care physician or something so that they can probably diagnose and find out what is going on with you so yeah um that is all i have to say about shedding in part two we're going to be focusing on breakage stuff that causes breakage how to remedy it let me know if you guys have any questions down below like i said all the research papers i referenced and everything or articles they're all going to be down below in the description box if you want to read by yourself let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section don't forget to like comment subscribe and share you can subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button down below on my face on this side also do not forget to watch my other natural videos on this side i'll see you guys in my next video Bye guys!